Hello everyone, hope you're doing well today. Um, I wanted to do a story, I was just passing by and saw it on the news, so I figured I would um, just opine on this one. Uh, let me pull it over here. This one's not really a feel-good story, sorry. All right, hopefully you can see that. Authorities in Haiti are... Just an observation, I mean, this looks like a war zone, so clearly there are some serious issues in Haiti right now because this, this graphic does not look good at all searching for an American nurse and her young child who were kidnapped last week near Port-au-Prince so a young lady and her child so you've got some horrible human being that just kidnapped someone a, a female and her child so you have to imagine how sorry of an individual you have to be to do something like that I'm assuming, I think this one's for kidnapping, so they do it for cash, right? Literally kidnapping people for cash. Yeah. We have free will, and some people just completely screw it up and turn into evil pieces of garbage. The abduction comes as Haitian authorities grapple with a rise in violent crimes and kidnappings that are fueled course by gang violence. CBS News correspondent Roxana Saberi joins us now in the studio with more. Roxana, it's good to have you here. What more do we know about this kidnapping and any efforts uh, to bring them back from the U.S.? Well, Lilia, the nonprofit Christian-based group Elroy Haiti. Ha right, Elroy. So let's hop over there. Christian-based group, um, missionaries, they're over there trying to help Haitians. So let's, let's take a look at Elroy and see what it is. Um, Elroy Haiti exists to raise up Haitian leaders um, who will strengthen families, restore relationships, and build healthy communities that function according to God's design and purpose. Wow, that sounds amazing. I like Elroy already. We believe this begins with the restoration of hope and dignity in each individual as they discover their true identity and purpose in Jesus Christ. Christ, yeah. Right, um, yeah. So this is what you would consider like uh, the good guys, the good good people. Um, you know, Christ followers, people who want to live by God's expectations and keep God happy and help all of us and planet and animals and everyone. Keep everyone happy. Everyone wins, you know, with Christianity. When, it, when it's done correctly and, you know, these people just want to do, they, they want to live in God's good graces by helping other people. So they're in Haiti trying to do that and then they have just dirtbags, kidnap them for cash. So let's see. Um, because he will restore, support, and strengthen. That is true. Restore hope and dignity through Christian education and outreach. Support local Haitian leaders to live into their God-given gifts and in so doing, impact their communities. It's awesome. Strengthen families and communities by providing pathways out of poverty through education and discipleship. Perfect. Seems like a really nice organization. I, you know, quick research, obviously, but uh, at least some put their, their their mission statement here on their page. Seems great. We aspire to demonstrate the abiding love of grace of Elroy, the God who sees us, calls us by name, and has a plan and a purpose for each and every life. That's true. The only thing that gets in the way is free will. So, you know, it can be a blessing or a curse depending on how you use it. Uh, but that's Elroy. So apparently she works at Elroy. Now we know who they are. Uh, let's go back to this. Confirm that Alex Dorsonville and her child were kidnapped on Thursday from the groups. And her child. That's how despicable these people are. You're not even going to kidnap her. You're going to take her child too. Campus right outside of Port-au-Prince or near Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti. But the details were. Right outside the capital of Port-au-Prince, like, what is going on in Haiti that you can't control the place that, literally your capital, the one central place, you know, for your country, you can't even protect that. It says a lot. And unclear. What we know about Alex, according to the group Elroy, is that she's from New Hampshire. She's the wife of the director of the program. Hmm. And uh, Elroy called her a deeply compassionate and loving person who considers Haiti her home. In a promo video on the Wow. So she's married to the director, considers Haiti her home. So she got kidnapped from her home where she's there doing mission work trying to help people. 
website, we heard Alex say herself that she's a nurse for students at the L. Royce. Once again, this picture of Haiti, it's, it's not complimentary. This looks awful. I'm sure that's not one issue, right? There are many issues going on here. I looked in literacy, I thought it was like 60% or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, literacy 61%, educational expenditures 1.4 of the GDP. So I'm not going to go through that whole list. There's a lot of information here if you want to go check it out for yourself. Um, but that's just one little quick hit. So yeah, the video, I think it's this one. Let's see. My name is Alex. I'm a nurse from New Hampshire, but now I live in Haiti. Sandro invited me to come to the school to do some nursing for some of the kids. He said that was a big need that they had. Nice. They're helping like a good Christian, right? At first, I didn't think that there was going to be much of a need there, but when I got there, there were so many cases. Generally, in the morning, I go to my makeshift clinic. Kids from the school will get permission from their teachers and they send them over and come to the nurse's office and then I check them out. I met Glandas before I started coming to be a nurse at the school. When I came to start working at the clinic, he was one of my first patients. He had a really large abscess that was painful and uncomfortable, and now he's doing so much better. He faithfully came every day to the clinic to have a check. Seems like a pretty awesome person, huh? You see that a lot in Christianity. Not all of them. Not all of them. Some people aren't truly Christians or Christians by name only, but you know, if you're truly a Christian and you're trying to emulate Christ and you're trying to live in accordance with God's rules and regulations and guidance, basically God's guidance, just look at it like that. It's an easier way to look at it. Um, yeah, so if you're trying to live within God's guidance, you, you typically turn out to be a pretty awesome human being. And then, you know, you get taken care of. Because like I said, it's an eternal journey. So don't, don't think just... You know, in the scope of like this life and your little 80 years, it's it's much, much longer. So uh, so if God is giving you guidance, it's probably a really good idea to take it because God can see the entire board, everything, whereas we, you know, we can't, so. Well, Asians are such a resilient people. They're full of joy and life and love. And I'm so blessed to be able to know so many amazing Haitians. Wow, that's nice. So she's there with this group, the Elroy group. They're trying to help out Haitians to raise up leaders. Sounds pretty awesome. These are great people. And then you have absolute scumbags who come in and kidnap them and want to sell them for money because they can't get a job. I don't, I don't know what the reasoning is. I really don't care. I don't care what kind of hard times you grow up in. I mean, not everyone has it, has it easy. Um, but I'm sorry that kidnapping people and selling them for money... That's not an option that's available to you in God's plan. That's that's not one of them. Let's see. Mm -hmm. And when you decide to act like that, there are repercussions. And she runs what she calls a makeshift clinic. She also said, I'm so blessed to be able to know so many amazing Haitians. And we did reach out to Dorsonville's family for comment, but they referred us back to the nonprofit, which says it is working with its partners mm -hmm. to ensure their safe return. So what can U.S. officials do at this point? It's so complicated when it comes to kidnapping and survival. It really is complicated, uh, particularly in Haiti. The State Department did confirm that two Americans, uh, it said it is aware of reports of the kidnapping of two U.S. citizens in Haiti, but it did not say that these citizens were Alex uh, Dorsonville and her mm -hmm. child. Uh, it did also say, the State Department told CBS News in a statement, that it is in regular contact with Haitian authorities and working with them. But as you mentioned, it is complicated. It's unclear how the State Department and with whom the State Department is working in Haiti. Well, hopefully, I know they're working hard to get these folks back. And I'm sure, you know, with all the intelligence they have and the resources available, hopefully we can get these folks back unharmed.
because there's a level of law, mm -hmm. lawlessness there. Yeah. But the department did say it has no higher priority than the safety and security of its U.S. citizens overseas. And interestingly, um, the kidnapping occurred on the same day that the State Department updated its do not travel advisory mm. to Haiti, and it ordered all non-emergency U.S. government personnel to leave the country as well as U.S. Jeez. citizens. And it also noted that kidnapping in Haiti is, a wide, is widespread. Victims regularly include U.S. citizens. All right, so Haiti is a complete mess. They're basically pulling everyone out or advising you to get out, you know, on your own dime. I'm not sure who's paying for it, but yeah, that place is just falling apart. And this is a great example, right? Just imagine if everyone in Haiti was a Christian, filled with the same love that this poor girl is that was over there helping, right? At this, at El Roy. She's over there helping, trying to spread God's love. If everyone had that type of love inside of them, Haiti wouldn't have any problems. Haitians would be helping each other. Other organizations would be in there helping the Haitians. They'd be glad to have them, just like the kids that were in that school that you saw. It would basically look like that, except they'd be adults and children and adolescents, and it would be amazing. That's the difference that Christianity makes. People don't understand it. I know it's been a couple thousand years, and it's not, you know no one really had video back then, so it, it's difficult for people. I know that. But just imagine if everyone in Haiti was Christian and filled with the same love that this poor girl is before she was kidnapped by gangster scumbags who aren't Christians. And from the way they're operating, they got a very, very rough road ahead of them. And they should. Wow. Um, so, I mean, as you say, this is what the, the State Department uh, has put out there, that these kidnappings seem to be more and more common. What do we know about, do we know that this has happened before? Uh, is, this, is this rare? Yeah, it, it has happened quite a bit. Unfortunately, kidnappings are part of daily life there in recent years. And according to a recent UN nice. report, Gang violence is fueling a rise in kidnappings, killings, and... 1,600 violent crimes between January and March. 400 kidnappings. 12% increase in three months. 165,000 driven from their homes by gang violence. Like, what? Do you have any police in, in Haiti at all? I mean, any police or, like, um, National Guard or any, any type of apparatus there to, to help people? This seems out of control. Like, I'm sure you know who these gangs are, right? I mean, you know how to locate them, where they are, how to round them up. I'm pretty sure these people are known. These aren't like people you have no idea who they are. So it just seems like it's out of control and no one's really doing enough about it. I'm not going to say anything. I'm sure they're trying. Maybe it's a resource issue. I don't know. You have to fix it. <laughs> you can't let this go on. Right? When you let this happen, it's like the broken windows theory, right? When you let this stuff go on, guess what you get? More of this. When you clamp down on it and actually stop it, well, then it's done. And then you roll in the missionaries and you, you get people on the program, right? You explain to them how much Christ loves them, how much God loves them, right? And then you fix the country forever. But this, when you just let this go on and you just sit back and be like, oh, yeah, we had like, you know, 1,600 violent crimes, 400 kidnappings, 165,000 uh, driven from their homes by gang violence, and you do nothing about it, and you probably sit back and go, oh, we don't have the resources. Okay, we'll get the resources. Ask someone for the resources. Do something. Because if you let it continue to happen, it's never going to stop. Injuries. And there have already been about 1,600 total incidents of these incidents in the first three months of the year, and about a quarter of those are kidnappings. What we've heard from human rights groups is relatively, relatives are sometimes forced to pay up to $1 million mm. in ransom. And our own Vlad Dutier traveled to Haiti earlier this year. He spoke to local officials who said the situation is like there's no police, no law enforcement. That can't be true. Let me rewind that. The situation is like there's no police, no law enforcement, and no governance. So it's very... No police. Hold on. Make sure I get that right. No law enforcement and no governance. So... No police, no law enforcement, and no government. Well, that explains the picture that I saw when I first opened this video. So this is like Mad Max over there. People just do whatever they want. Yeah. I mean, until you get this place under control, you're just going to continue to have problems. 
It's hard to spread Christianity when you're letting people just get snatched up. And now, guess what? Because of these stories, you're not going to have many Christian missionaries wanting to go there because guess what? They don't want to be abducted and then ransomed out, you know? So your problems get even worse then. She was over there helping. She was going to raise up some great kids or, or help to raise them up with their families, you know? I don't know if it's an orphanage or not, but what a mess. Very difficult. And do we know anything about the family of, of this nurse and her daughter? Are they talking to media? About? They are not talking to media yet. They have just referred us to Elroy Haiti, and so there are many details that we have yet to learn. Well, difficult story. Thank you so much, Very Roxana. Difficult. It's good to see you. Very difficult. I don't know if there's much to add from this, but we'll take a look. Um, before she was kidnapped, American nurse described Haitians as full of joy and love. That's true. I saw that video with her and the kids, and I definitely got that. There was lots of joy and lots of love there. But, you know, unfortunately, when those when kids like that are raised up without good values, without good Christian values, they can turn into absolute monsters and use their free will to just rape and pillage and run around and do whatever they want, like current-day pirates. Uh, it's kidnapped with her child. With her child. That's the worst. I mean, it's bad enough. It just They don't give a They don't care. To do something like that, you really must think that God doesn't exist. That's the only way. Like, why would you do it otherwise? Why would you go out and, and do stuff like this when you know that you're going to get crushed? Because that's one of God's children who's doing a great job, it looks like. And then you're going to go over there and steal her and abduct her and her child to make money. So you must think that there is no God. Or, or you follow some religion where violence is part of the religion um, that was taught to you by a false prophet. That's also possible. Because if you believe that, then you would probably look at that false prophet and be like, well, that's exactly what you know Muhammad did, so that's what I should do, right? No, that's not what you should do. So these people either have a false religion or they don't believe in God. And in either one of those two scenarios, they're wrong. They're absolutely wrong. And unfortunately, by the time they figure that out, it's going to be too late to fix it. Let's see, Elroy, uh, Christian Humanitarian Aid Organization. Yep. The wife of the director, yep, and their child were reportedly abducted Thursday while serving in their community ministry. Elroy's campus near the capital city of Port Bray. And it's right near the capital. That's the crazy part. It's a non-profit. Not even there for the money. They're there helping out to do God's work, to be God's hands and feet. And then some scumbag for-profit wants to kidnap them and then sell them back. That's what free will gets you. Free will is amazing. You know, it's, it's great that we have that option. And that God was like, I'll give you free will. But you can see it doesn't always work out. You know, some people, they forget about God and they decide to go their own way and they think they can do whatever they want without repercussions. Like nothing's going to happen to them. U.S. State Department ordered the Department uh, of Non-Emergency General Personnel out of Haiti. The security situation in the country deteriorates. Yeah, I'd say so. Order followed a travel advisor from the U.S. Embassy in Haiti, U.S. nationals to leave the country immediately due to armed clashes between criminal groups and police. Again, it, you, clearly you need more police. You don't need me to tell you that. You basically have armed gangs running your country. So you, you might want to reach out and get some help, get some folks in there, and maybe stomp this out. Because if you just let it happen, it's going to continue to happen. It's hard to spread Christianity when, when someone's bashing your head in with a bat, you know, or, or kidnapping you and selling you back, right? You have to get everyone under control, and then you can send the missionaries in to do their work. But they can't do their work if they're getting kidnapped and sold back. So first step, get some more resources you apparently don't have enough, or take the handcuffs off them, whatever the case may be. But you need to, you know, push the crime down, and then you can get the missionaries in there. Uh, Port-au-Prince and surrounding areas have been gripped by a years-long kidnapping for profit epidemic. So this is well known, with hundreds of Haitians targeted by gangs seeking ransom payments each year. Okay, you don't know who the gangs are? You don't know where they are? You don't know their, their coordinates? 
So get some folks and go in there and you know suppress the gangs. And then once that's done, you can get the missionaries in there. It's hard to spread God's love when you're being shot or stabbed or bashed in the head with a bat. So. Uh, targeting rich and poor like foreigners have been taken in several high-profile kidnappings. Well, I guess this is one of them. 2021, 17 missionaries in the United States and Canada were seized by a local gang while traveling on the road north of the capital and held for more than a month. Authorities have registered a little over 1,000 kidnappings in Haiti from January to June of this year. Wow. A thousand kidnappings. You have serious problems over there. You, you need many more resources to go in there and clean that place up. Because if you keep letting this happen, it'll never stop. Women, girls, boys, children, no, they don't care. Just soulless. Nurse in New Hampshire moved to Haiti after her husband invited her there uh, to the Haitian school to provide nursing care for the children. That's pretty awesome. A couple married in Haiti. Oh, they even married there. Nice. They had such fond memories of Haiti until they were kidnapped by gangsters. Haitians are such resilient people, said in the video, they're full of joy. Yeah, from the video I saw, awesome. Yeah, obviously, it doesn't take many bad apples to ruin the bunch. But unfortunately, you have more than a few bad apples in Haiti. From the way this article looks and, and the news we just watched, it seems like you have more than a couple bad apples. So you need to get those bad apples sorted out, and then you can fix the rest of the country. Uh, high threat of violence, violent crime, and kidnapping. Uh, U.S. government's capacity to provide emergency services to U.S. citizens in Haiti is severely constrained. The U.S. government's capacity to provide emergency services to U.S. citizens. Why is that? What's, what's constraining you? Given the recent armed clashes between gangs and police, the high threat of violent crime and kidnapping through Port au Prince, the Department of State urges U.S. citizens to make plans to depart Haiti as soon as possible via commercial means. I guess that means on your dime. So, yeah, as soon as you can, hop on a plane and get out of there. I'm not sure what the U.S. government's so severely constrained from. Uh, please pray for Alex Thorsonville. Yes, absolutely. I have and I will. Um, pray that God would keep her safe and be with her through this trial and deliver her from her captors. Yes. And also that God would deliver justice to the people that act like this. But that's up to God, not us. Elroy described the nurse as deeply compassionate and loving person who considers Haiti her home and the Haitian people her friends and family. Yeah, makes sense. From the video I saw, that makes total sense. Alex works tirelessly at our school and community nurse to bring relief to those who are suffering as she loves and serves the people of Haiti in the name of Jesus. That's awesome. Alex. I'm a nurse from New Hampshire, but now I live in Haiti. Sandro invited me to come to the school to do some nursing for some of the kids. He said that was a big need that they had. At first, I didn't think that there was going to be much of a need like. there, but when I got there, there were so off. many cases. Generally, in the morning, I go to my makeshift clinic. Kids from the school will get permission from their teachers and they send them over and come to the nurse's office and then I check them out. I met Glandas before I started coming to be a nurse at the school. When I came to start working at the clinic, he was one of my first patients. He had a really large abscess that's that was painful and uncomfortable and now he's doing so much better. He faithfully came every day to the clinic to have a check. <laughs> Haitians are such a resilient people. They're full of joy and life and love. And I'm so blessed to be able to know so many amazing Haitians. That's awesome. But it's too bad there are also Haitians that are vile and nasty which are the ones that kidnapped her. 
Yeah. Yep. So that's the story. It's a sad one. Hopefully, um, you know, hopefully those resources will get freed up and we can get some folks in there to, to save her. And then you need to get you need to get a lot more resources in there to actually clean up Haiti. You know who the gangs are. You know where they live. I'm sure it's not hidden to you. You have intelligence on the ground, especially local police. You know who these folks are. So you need to get a lot more support. Go in there, tamp down all the uh, rebels, and then once that's done, you can roll in the Christian missionaries, and you can make Haiti beautiful. But, that's it. So hopefully things work out for her. Yes, absolutely pray for her, for her safe return, her and her child. And, you know, ho hopefully God puts some kindness and tenderness in the heart of the captors, the uh, people that stole her, and maybe they'll let her go. But, you know, if they don't, that's between them and God. And I can assure you with a story like this, you know, justice will be served. You don't have to worry about that. It's a very long road. There's plenty of time to, to balance the scales. So that's it. Have a great week. And just remember God loves you and he wants to protect us. He wants to provide guidance. So have a great week.